morning everyone today is august 7th and uh, i'm coming to you from ottawa ontario where i live with my husband and my little daughter uh in canada actually <laughs> uh today i'm filming from outside from my backyard and i'm not sure if it's a good idea because um it's been very hot in ottawa the whole summer like five like plus 35 or even 40 it feels like 40 and today we had like lots of rain and uh, it seemed to be cloudy but to right now like the sun is coming out and i'm not sure if it, if i can stay here for like an hour while recording because it's getting very hot uh and uh, it's been a while since we since i recorded last time so i'm out of practice a bit especially considering that i don't speak much english at home but i hope everything will be uh, uh, will be okay and uh, i'll start with finish objects and i have two and we talked about this cardigan last time this is philippa by isabel kramer and I tried to insert a video showing this cardigan wearing uh, on me. And I love it. I need it out of Holzgarn Noble and last time I talked about this yarn that it's a great yarn uh, it's even can be washed in a washing machine on a cold cycle but uh, I know several girls who uh, tried to wash it in a washing machine they felt it uh, their sweaters uh, and I think and we think that that's because uh, sometimes um, like a machine picks it's saying that it's like a cold cycle or 30 degrees cycle but at some point it changes the temperature a bit and for example when it rinses um, uh, the clothes uh, it uses uh, top cold water and for example when it washes it heats it up a bit um, up to 30 degrees and there is a drop in temperature uh, and that's why like the yarn felts but we don't know so when I wash it in a washing machine, I make sure that my cycle is all the like, cold, top cold. Um, and it's the better way, <laughs> the best way to check it is just to wash your sample. Because otherwise you can just spoil everything. Uh, so this cardigan, I have not washed in a washing machine yet. I washed it by hand uh, because and it's crucial to wash it very well because the yarn has lots of uh, spinning oil and it needs to bloom very well in order to the cashmere to show off right now i can't really say it bloom and it's full uh, but it is still very nice fuzz as you can see and it contains just 5% cashmere but the yarn is very soft because um, the rest 95% is uh, I believe it's uh, lamb's jelunk wool so it's very very mm, very very soft and durable and also I love this yarn because the color is I would say variegated it's not flat it has lots of lots of shadows and tones so it's very beautiful and uh, but when you need it because it's treated with oil it's not as pleasant it looks like wire but once you wash it it's just it's just the best yarn i love it uh, and about washing i would say that the regular wool soak won't help because it needs to be like something heavy duty and what i use it's my handmade uh, soap and um, it's formulated specifically to treat this heavy stains and um, i do sell it in my shop i make natural cosmetics 
And I sell it as a stain remover because it can even remove blood and wine. And this is not just my words, it's feedback that I received from my customers over the years because it's been a while since I make um, this soap. And uh, I'm planning to release um, a liquid version of the soap probably next month, but right now it comes as a hard bar. Uh, and you, pro you can do everything in your house with that soap and it's eco-friendly. <laughs> yeah. I'm kind of talking about like my own product now and I feel like I'm advertising, but at the same time, it's a really great product and I just can't not s like say about it because it's a really great product to use. I, I usually use it even for um, washing off like wax and preservative from fruits and uh, produce I buy from a store because they usually uh, treat uh, fruits and berries you know to not get moldy so I usually I always wash it with that soap because it washes off completely it's um, hypoallergenic it's um, it's a good friendly it's by the degradable um, so it's multi-purpose soap and it's great for washing your wool for the first time or even fleeces if you filter and stuff like that okay that's enough about the soap let's talk about the cardigan uh, to be honest I have not baited the cardigan so but I think it's uh, between 350 and 400 grams uh, if I get to it uh, put it on the screen um, and the size is number three in, in a row. I think she had like extra small, small, and then medium. So I used the medium one and my gauge was slightly off. It was looser, looser than it was supposed to be, but everything worked out perfectly and it just fits me right. I think if, if my gauge wouldn't been, um, would been correct, it wouldn't have fitted me. So I'm super happy with it because it's like classic garment and I will be able to wear it, I think, for the rest of my life. Uh, the only problem is the buttons. I think they're too big and I need to find something smaller. Maybe I'll get something wooden. And uh, so they look OK, they look OK, but my buttonholes a bit kind of a, a bit tight. So here it is. The only thing I struggled with is uh, the edging because uh, the part does not specify how you're supposed to bind off. So what I did, I used um, a needle to do a back uh, stitch. I think it's a back stitch bind off. It basically imitates your long tail cast on. And it's very time consuming, consuming to, to do it, but I think it looks great and, all th and it's stretchy. The only problem is you have to, you're supposed to have the, like the tail and needs to be like three times bigger, longer than uh, the edge you're, you're going to close to bind off. So just imagine if I'm binding off the whole rib around around here so it's a very long tail and it's pretty um, easy to mess up but it worked out well also if you choose to use this bind off uh, use like probably two three sizes uh, smaller needles for the last row before you bind off. oh it's very it's very very shiny probably I'll go inside because it's getting very very hot and very very shiny so I cannot stay in here I had to move to my basement because it's getting to be very hot again and it's just impossible to film outside it's like already plus 30 something and hit it on the sign you know just get toasty okay we just talked about the Philippe cardigan and uh, I love the construction, I love the look, I love how it fits me and it took no time to finish it. Yes, it took me three months actually to finish it, but it's not because it's something 
are complicated or, or so it's because I just have just a little time to spend for knitting unfortunately because of my toddler but I'm super happy with it and also what I did I just decided to put this cotton tape over the neckline because it stretches soft a lot uh, this here you are supposed to cast on uh, with their I don't remember how it's called but just you know regular cast on um, between other like within a garment so you had two shoulders and you were supposed to cast on um, stitches between the shoulders and the cast on was very very stretching and I was kind of worried about it from the beginning and when I uh, tried it on I saw how the shoulders were like um, pulling and I think it's not possible to wear this cardigan without um, making sturdy uh, this neckline so I just took a regular cotton I had in my stash and made this uh, tape and sew it by hand and now it's perfect it's not getting anywhere it's just structured and i think it will hold the whole garment in place for a very long time and also i think it looks like a design feature it's very cute <laughs> and the colors i think uh, matching the cardigan very well so love this cardigan the second finished project is called Chaika uh, and this is a by Japanese designer Midori and uh, I, th I think she knows Russian um, probably like very well because uh, she translated her own pattern into Russian it also comes in English and Japanese and I leave all the links down there for on her Instagram and I think she's pretty popular on Ravelry now her sweater uh, oversized sweater ranunculus is um very popular now i think like lots of project fin has finished and i find her just by searching for ideas for my summer cardigan and when i saw this garment i could not resist to cast on this is called chaika and uh, it's a russian word that means uh, a seagull and it's it also a name for Soviet Union vehicle so but it doesn't really matter it's called Cheka and it just flew off my needle because um, I use six millimeters uh, needles and it's like big needles and the yarn is drops bell and it includes cotton some linen and um, rayon so it's a bit stretchy and drapey and I think it's perfect for this kind of garment. Uh, what I loved about the pattern because uh, she give you she gives you variety of choices so you can do different kind of uh, lengths and she describes how to change it. She also um, gives you directions how to make it more fitted, how to you to do different kind of um, sleeves short long uh, narrow wide so whatever you can do whatever you want and she gives you directions you can use whatever yarn you want just um, get the gauge and to be honest I didn't swatch for this one because uh, the uh, this model is oversized and I didn't mind if I <laughs> go a bit off um, and I think it looks looks pretty much what it's supposed to be and this garment is a bit like a crop top and it's perfect for high-waisted skirts and like to go over dress the only thing i did wrong is this hose it looks like yarn overs but it's actually increases which i did wrong i didn't read instructions properly and um, it was just saying make one between the stitches so <laughs> that's what i did but everybody knows that one uh, make one means that you're supposed to make one um with their twisted like pick up if i can describe it this way <laughs> but anyway i decided to leave it like this because it looks like a design feature and i think it looks looks kind of okay uh you start with the neckline 
then you increase over here also if you just happen to uh, to need this kind of garment uh, pay attention to her video instructions because here you do increases um, in a mirrored direction in a mirrored way and um, you need to learn how to do it on the left side otherwise it will not be correct and here you are supposed to have two um, knit stitches running along this line but if you don't watch the video how to do it correctly you end up with one knit stitch and one purl stitch and that's what i did the first time i knitted it and then i just I ripped everything back because I think that it's like the main f it's a very it's a key de detail of the design and it needs to look very well when I um, checked other projects on, La on Ravelry lots of people did this made this mistake and I think it's okay to leave it because I was considering that but for me it was very quick to just renew it so I decided just to fix it also for the short version of sleeve you're supposed to pick up the stitches along the edges and do um i cord cast off bind off but uh, i did that and i didn't like it because um cotton you know it's unforgiving for if you make holes there will be holes because it's not wool it won't bloom it will show of your mistake <laughs> of your mistakes very very well and uh, picking up stitches on such a big gauge it didn't look right so I just ripped it off and what I did I just um, steamed the edges and then I washed in a washing machine and now I think it looks kind of neat and at least it, it looks better than it used to be with the i-cord bind off so i'm super happy with it and here's the video how it looks on me Next, my projects in progress and to be honest I have just one and I'm pretty much a monogamous knitter because when I have many things on my needles I feel like I'm doing no progress I have no finished objects and it feels like it taking <laughs> it's taking forever to finish something so I'm trying to concentrate just on one garment but I do sometimes have a s like several projects but at this moment it happened to have just one and it's again the same chaika the same as this one but in wool and I'm making the long version uh, of sleeves uh, this yarn I had in my stash this was a present from my friend and here how it looks like so it's brown and these beige colors and right now I have sleeves half way done because um, I was not sure if I have enough yarn to finish like the sleeves off and I just broke the yarn and started the second sleeve now I see that I won't have enough yarn but I have I'm actually combining two yarns I hold two uh, uh, threads threads um, one is this kind of silk mohair but it's not silk mohair it's a brushed alpaca um, which is super light alpaca I believe from Lang and this is Italian yarn and this is a present from my European friend who sent it over this is <laughs> uh, so that's why I have it and it's just beautiful it's light and I had just three balls of this color uh, and each ball is 25 grams so I had just 30 75 grams and I have 50 grams of this bash but I don't want to do the sleeves um, this color I want the whole body be brown so what I decided to do 
I ordered this um, coca it's not it's not called coca color I don't remember what the color is but this is Holzgarn coast and it's 55% uh, lamb's wool I believe it's like merino lamb but I could be wrong and 45% cotton and I love this yarn also because it's not as hot as wool but it looks kind of like wool it feels kind of like wool so I love this yarn and now I hold um, this uh, this thread doubled one this and one this and it makes very nice fabric I think but again I didn't swatch because it's an oversized garment but I think my gauge is off uh, considerably because I've got like really cropped top <laughs> it's really cropped so uh, no way to wear it with pants uh, but I think it will be great with skir high-waisted skirts and that's that's what I wear when I go out I usually wear um, dresses and high-waisted skirts and I think in um, in the winter it will be great the only thing now I'm struggling with my sleeves because they are a bit if I use the pattern they they get a bit um, short and narrow so now I had to rip it back uh, and make less decreases and now I do my own calculations and hope it will work out uh, but I this is the only thing I that left but I will hold this yarn doubled, hold yarn, and I finish it off with just with this yarn. And I think it will be okay. I think I will love this garment. It's very, very light and warm. Right now I have, I think it will, the final weight will be like around 100 grams. No, 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 not 100 grams, 200 grams, maybe 200 grams. And uh, I will put all the information about uh, needle sizes and yar uh, yarn and how much yarn I used on my Ravelry page. So it's right here. Feel free to friend me and to see uh, what I'm making. Uh, to be honest, I'm not so good in um, keeping my projects up to date, but sometimes I try to do that and my stash is uh, not correct in there but it's okay sometimes I do put, put something in here so that's it for projects in progress and uh, my because it's like nearly done my next project as I said last time is going to be a lapa pesa cardigan for my daughter and uh, yarn I have for it it's again holds yarn and I don't know, it just happened that I have so much Holt Garden because I love it so much <laughs> that now everything is Holt Garden. But unfortunately, the price is, uh, since last year, they um, raised prices considerably, like almost twice. And now I, I'm not sure if I'll be buying this yarn for, for the new price, maybe when they have sale or something. But it's it it's worth, it's worth it. And... Um, yeah, it's a great it's a really great yarn good selection and quality so I have several sleeves I don't need anymore <laughs> from my um, stag head pullover which didn't happen to to be finished and I talked about it last time so this is what I have like it's a ton for a small two-year-old cardigan and also this this will be the body and the yoke it's going to be to be it's going to be a round yoke i have lots and lots of minis here oops 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 hold garn have mini bags with five colors different colors 10 grams each and i had two bags so i have 10 different colors it's more than enough to make a yoke and uh, i was going to use a pattern but I haven't find uh, found anything uh, that ca catched my eye and I'm thinking now that I will have to do my own calculations and my own design <laughs> but I'll see if I won't find anything I probably will have to do it on my own and if it works out maybe I'll write it down we'll see if you know a good lapa piece a kind of yoked cardigan 
uh, baby car toddler cardigan please let me know maybe it will make my life easier uh, that's it for oh by the way this is a prototype i just will use it as a uh, size guidance for my cardigan but it will be yoked round yoke that's it for my projects in progress and now i'd like to talk a little bit about acquisitions and here is what i've got i know i <laughs> i said last time that i'm on a yarn diet but there is a story behind all this beautiful yarn um i'm not sure if in america there is such a thing but in europe uh, there is yarn and it's been i think like maybe a couple of years since we discovered this this source of yarn but this is a um, outlet yarn which is used by fa by fashion industry so for example if dolce gabbana um, orders like a specific yarn from a factory to be made for their new collection and there is some la some last overs they sell it for like almost for free <laughs> so and there are uh, special stores in europe and russia which collect such yarn and you can buy uh, this luxurious yarn or uh, very very cheap like i wouldn't say it's like extremely cheap but it's way cheaper than a regular yarn for example you can buy luxurious cashmere um one kilogram for 130 euro I mean 130 euros for kilogram it's 13 euros for 100 grams can you imagine it's like nothing compared to what you have to pay in a regular store like what i googled it's like 30 dollars for 50 grams of cashmere and this is one uh, what is it what it comes to like 15 dollars for 100 grams so it's like four times less um but you cannot buy it here in America but because I have the second podcast in Russia and I have like lots of surprise subscribers there like almost 18,000 I had their online um, online uh, podcast on my Instagram and I talked about it and uh, it happened that one of my subscribers live right where the store is and uh, she messaged me that she would be happy to buy some yarn for me and send it over but i decided it's not worth it because worth it because you know paying shipping from europe for like two kilograms of yarn it adds up but almost the next day my other friend contacts me and saying that she is going uh, for a trip to that very town in Europe <laughs> so you know everything kind of met up and uh, I have all this beautiful yarn this luxurious yarn and let me tell you what it is so this one is 100% uh, cashmere by Brunelli Caccianelli uh if you don't know it's a fashion designer in europe very famous one i have 600 grams i have like a lot and i think it's like a unique yarn now i'll take the camera and we'll be showing you what i have in here more closely so here's the cashmere and as you can see it looks like this like a tube and it doesn't look like cashmere but because all the yarn is made for fashion industry and to be um, knit on a machine it's treated a lot with oil and once you wash it it blooms considerably and it gets this fat beautiful yarn this is this is not washed and this is washed and here's the sample and this is knit up with a five millimeter needle. So it's kind of thick fabric and it will knit up very quickly. And I love the color. I don't know, oh, it's probably very similar what it looks like. It's like a graphite gray. It's like grayish, brown gray, I would say, like grayish, just grayish color. And I think it's rich and beautiful. 600 grams this is a lot it can be like a huge cardigan or a sweater 
I have no idea what I'm gonna make with it yet. So the second what I have ordered, what I asked to buy, I'd bought way more than here, but my friend had just uh, not enough space in her luggage, in her baggage. This is Royal Alpaca Silk. And who doesn't know, alpaca can be very different. There are several grades of alpaca. Regular alpaca, alpaca is uh, a bit itchy when you need it. Then um, there is a baby alpaca, which is like very soft, extremely soft. And then the softest um, kind of kind possible is royal alpaca. Uh, it's very expensive yarn. It's one of my favorite, but I was I thought that I won't be able to afford it. But because this is this kind of overstock, uh, that was just 63 euros for a kilo. Can you imagine your royal alpaca with silk for 63 euros for kilogram? I don't know. Um, I've never heard actually um, people <laughs> talking about prices on podcasts, but because it's uh, not something indie dial or like local business, because it's like from a factory, I think it's okay to talk about price prices. I got 600 grams as well, 400 grams of this um, gray one, 100 gram of this beige pinky and 100 gram of black one. Uh, and the reason behind this having this you know variety of colors because I want to make um, again like lapa paste a yoke sweater this is a swatch I knit it with 3.5 millimeters and I think it's a bit you know too too hollow so I have to use three millimeters needles it will be a pain for me <laughs> But I think to hold the thread doubled will be too hot because Royal Alpaca is very hot on its own and to have this like thick fabric uh, I think it will make impossible to wear uh, the garment made out of doubled um, thread. And then the last thing I received, this was not my purchase, but this was a present from a subscriber who sent me everything uh, and when I received it I thought like what it is it's like very strange looking yarn because it kind of it doesn't look like uh, wool mm, and I thought is it polyester or what but then she messaged me that it's 100% silk and it's tweedy and it's beautiful and there is three balls big balls of this 100 silk and one ball of boucle it's textured here this one is textured it's absolutely beautiful and the colors it's actually showing off properly i made two uh, samples this one is knit up with six millimeter needle and I was thinking about like summer cardigan beautiful and this one is made with three millimeter needle I think for a summer cardigan or a tunic it's just perfect and also I don't know uh, probably lots of people are aware but 100% silk is hypoallergenic it kills bacteria it uh, doesn't allow it to spread it's perfect if you have like eczema dermatitis or you're like a very sweaty person um, or something like this so it um, kills all the bacteria microbes it uh, keeps your skin ventilated it's perfect for summer and it even heals irritations so i'm super happy with this yarn it's my best trick i can imagine um, for the summer ah so the next section uh we'll talk a, a little bit about sewing i've finished um two dresses last 
months. It's one dress is for me and one is for my daughter. And the patterns I used is um, by a Russian uh, pattern maker. And uh, she only makes them in Russian. But I know that lots of her customers are from around the world because um, she has a big variety of patterns and uh, they are just perfectly fitted uh, and you know they're just beautiful so I'll leave her contacts down there you can um, take a look on her Instagram everything can be translated um, by the hit of a button so you can read it anyway and her patterns are I think um, considerably cheap they like converted to do US dollars they are like three dollars um, but they are digital they all are digital she have several uh, YouTube tutorials how to make her patterns so you can just watch and make them and I'll insert a little clip about the dress because uh, I want I, I haven't brought it down here, but anyway, you'll see the clip. Feeling inside, he sings the blues now with the clothes on my door. The smell of blood, I'm spinning on the floor. Is the moon he has? Does he read my mind? And the second is a dress for my daughter. Here it is. That's what I've done um, last month. And uh, now I'd like to talk about my plants. Um, I've bought this fabric and this is a beautiful fabric. I love the color. This is deep, you know, bottle green. And uh, I would say it's a bit, it's a neat fabric and it's probably it's cotton. And I bought it extremely cheap. It's three dollars Canadian dollars a meter, uh, which is like two dollars you has probably a meter. And the reason why it was so cheap because the fiber is unknown. But there were um, washing directions, and they're the same as for cotton. And together with the um, sales also said we think that it is cotton. And it's beautiful. I've bought three meters. What I'm thinking, I'll make a dress and probably a skirt. We'll see if I have enough of fabric. But I'm just so excited to make something out of it because the color is, I think, perfect for uh, for the coming fall. And my last part <laughs> of the podcast, yes, it is extremely long today, is about ceramic. Ceramics. Here it is. I won't show you everything because it will take forever, uh, but I just want to talk a, a little bit about it. Um, I took last year, not last year, yes, last year I took a course, um, hand-built ceramic, and then I took studio time and was working on my own. And what I was making, at first I was making different kind of soap dishes for my store, and uh, they already I think sold out just this one one left because I found it recently and I thought I lost it so this one is still on my website um, but I have lots of um, mugs uh, so the history behind this when I was making the dishes I decided to make like a couple of mugs and when I posted them on internet everybody loved them I had so many requests if I can make more if I going to sell them like people were interested a lot and i had three mugs and i've sold one as a uh, fundraising for 
um, for for charity in Russia for kids um, and two I've sold to my friends who who was most interested in, uh, yeah it's kind of friends my customer best customers uh, and I decided that I'll make more because of so much interest in them but when I made them uh, several pe people bought them but uh, now I have quite a few still sitting here and waiting for their owners uh, but I'm not worried you know when I first made the soap dishes and put them on th the website I was kind of in my mind that uh, I will sell them very quickly like in like in a week but nobody were buying them at first and I was kind of disappointed but then um, with time yeah, it, they they were sold out one by one, but they were sold out. Same thing, I think, with the cups. They're just waiting for their time, <laughs> and I absolutely love them because they're botanically printed. They're hand built, hand built not on. A, uh, they're made not on a wheel, but uh, from scratch by hand, and they're printed with the uh, botanical motifs. It's like um, real plants. I don't know. I'll put uh, more photos so you can see better. It's white clay and uh, with this printed, imprinted flowers and herbs. The only one that, which is not printed is this socked one. Just love it. I think it's perfect for a knitter. And inside it's all glazed. I think uh, I have a couple of favorite ones. I'll show you. This one is definitely my favorite one. It has like, big imprints and it greenish and inside it is white. On my website there are more pictures and you can see better. This one is very delicate. This one is almost the same as the green one. I also made a hook, um, hooks and needles holder. There is no hold, um, okay. yeah, holder, there is no holder. And uh, I think this one is probably the second favorite one. Love the imprints and it's glazed inside so there are several more and uh, just want to show you a couple of more things I have this is two plates they're both on website Here. and uh, like they can be used as a regular dish for serving but I think they're so beautiful that it will be pretty just to hang them on a wall. This one has a real eucalyptus leaf imprint. And my logo. This one printed with, uh, it's not real flowers, but it's just wooden stamps I use for soap printing. Here, like each soap I make is wrapped like this with uh, the stamp on it and the soap and itself is also stamped with such a stamp and a golden mica so it has a golden stamp okay i won't unwrap it so i'll just insert the picture looks like ah and one more I just want to show you it's not on the website i keep it for myself but just i love this dish this is made with a real uh, maple leaf it's huge uh, and it's just a candy dish or cookie dish that was it for today um, in terms of ceramics i'm hoping to take a real course this fall hopefully but we'll see because i'm enjoying it so much and I'm hoping to continue the botanical uh, theme in my ceramics, but I'm not sure how it's going to work with the wheel ceramic because it's easy to do it 
when you hand build and I'm not sure how like you can imprint something when it's done on a wheel but probably I'll come up with some ideas or I'll find a source <laughs> how to learn to do that I think that's it for today thank you very much for uh, being with me and hope we'll see each other very soon bye bye